Hey, what's up guys, it's Josh, and today I wanna to go over seven power tips and shortcuts you can use in Cubase. These are seven tips that I wish I knew when I first started, and so if you're a beginning composer uh, using Cubase, this is the video for you. So here we go, number one is the Q-Link feature. Now, what I mean by that is holding the button Shift and Alt uh, on PC or uh, shift and command for Mac and if you do that it highlights this button here the Q-Link um, you can also click on it to permanently activate it but if you're on the fly I like using the temporary button and all of a sudden now if I were to highlight these tracks I can link these together and bypass inserts I can change the panning the, the fader volume and whatnot. Uh, this is something is a very, very powerful feature that you can do for multiple changes on the fly. The next step is grid relative. Uh, the grid relative event feature is a type that you can use to quickly uh, move audio and MIDI clips. So for instance, if I am wanting to move this file over, and you'll see that it's not quite on the grid, but I want it relative to the grid. What I'll do is make sure you're selected there and now you can move all of these events over relative to the grid. If you don't do that, it's going to be, and let's say you're on the regular grid mode, it's going to shift those notes over so that the beginning of that event window is on the on the grid and that's not good so that this is good for certain patches like strings where often more often than not your starting notes not on the grid itself uh, so that's a very useful tip you can um, use that for uh, multiple tracks as well if you're cutting and pasting things so number three uh, speaking of your cutting and pasting here's a quick way to go about cutting and pasting so uh, first off you want to assign your key commands properly so if you go here my L will assign it so that the transport locate selection will start at the left hand side and if I press colon then it's the other side it's uh, going to be on the end so for instance if I want to move back and forth between the two I'm just pressing L and colon now um, what you can do here by pressing colon I can copy that paste press colon again paste paste, paste, and so on till you paste to where you want to end it to. So all of a sudden you can copy and paste very quickly that way. Number four is your markers and time base mode. Okay, so let me go ahead and get this set for you. By default, for the longest time, I saw the marker window, uh, marker track like this. And so I just assumed that it was set to uh, time-based mode uh, for film scoring, but that's not the case. In order to actually have it visible, you want to go to track control settings and in the hidden controls, go ahead and add the toggle time base. Now you have that option to go from time-based mode to linear mode. Now, as you know, for film scoring, um, we need to make sure our hits are, are right on point. And so if you change tempos often, then what will happen is your um, your next hit points that are um, on the uh, consecutive order of things will actually be shifted over by the timing of such. So make sure that you set it to the time-based mode so it's not affected when you change your tempo. All right, next is going to be renaming files. Now, what I mean by renaming files are um, a lot of times if you're copying and pasting um, similar MIDI uh, events, then you have here uh, two of the same names. Look over on the top left corner, uh, temp felt long, temp felt long, and that's because I copied and pasted that. Now the actual track name is called temp hard long, meaning it's a long sustained note and with a hard mallet. So in order to change this, and so that if I'm selecting two events and I can see the difference, what you need to do is change the name. So the way to do that is go over here, and now I can change that to hard long. All right, and then all of a sudden, you have those two options.
Okay, uh, going on, bouncing out your audio files is a very important step for uh, situations when you are mixing and mastering and you want to send it over to a uh, third party. So in order to do this, here's a quick way to consolidate your files. In Pro Tools, they call it consolidating um, and that's what you're essentially doing. So uh, what that means is you want to be able to uh, have your audio file um, all consolidated into one from the left and right of the marking points. So for instance, if I wanted to do that and, and create my vinyl drum set kick track all as one so that it starts at marker point one, then what you'll do is you want to go ahead and right click, go to audio and bounce your selection. Now all of a sudden you have um, digital silence where the track starts and that way when you're exporting your files to a different DAW you can do so quickly. You can also do that with multiple files so you can go ahead and select the whole thing with two or three tracks or more and I'll do the same thing. Bounce selection. And the last tip for Cubase is your backup project. So when you, whenever you're saving out from one session to another, let's say I like my setup in this particular session. I want to use the same setup for a different session. Don't use save as. Uh, the reason is because if you save as, it's going to actually keep all of the, your uh, audio files that you edit and bounce uh, within the same uh, a folder that you use in the original. In order to move your project folder over, the only way to do that is to go to backup project. If you do the backup project, then you can actually create a new folder, call it test. And if you do that, then now you can actually do a new uh, session name and your project folder will be saved and housed on in a different area of your hard drive. So that's about it for today. Um, I wanted to do a quick brief video, but this actually can save you loads of time in your next session. All right, thanks. Uh, please watch more videos on my channel if you want to learn more about the music production side. Um, of course, this one's on Cubase, but uh, I have other videos that relate to more of the composition, um, MIDI tricks and more so subscribe to my channel if you haven't already thanks I'll see you next time